about it pessimism. Yeah. Uh, it cultivates fear. Mm -hmm. It cultivates anxiety. Yes. Uh, and it, uh, it produces uh, a, a short-term uh, uh, solution uh, to a long-term problem when it's yeah. not just a reverse. But over a long period of time, it disillusions and it discourages even those who don't have pessimism. Uh, it brings in that spirit that's not of God, the spirit of fear. It brings in that spirit of depression, which is not of God. Uh, but hope itself will enlighten that dark. Amen. Remember that light will never be overcome by darkness. That's right. Amen. Light has a greater power than darkness does. Hope does not deny now or remove the reality of the darkness uh, and its painful providence to many of us. We're going to go through things. Oh, yeah. Life is that way. Yes. It's on the agenda for you and I to go through things. But it will, hope will shine a light in those dark valleys in your life. Uh, and it'll point to you the sunrise of it. And there's an end to it somewhere. Yes, sir. But we rely on our hope to get us to that point of that sunrise. Uh, we don't need to wait, though, until heaven pays off with hope. Many of us say, well, we're going to be okay in the by and by. And then uh, we live a life of pessimism as Christians. But I'm here to tell you that hope has a, even, uh, a reward for you even closer than the by and by. Uh, there are spiritual, uh, there are emotional, and even physical benefits to having the right hope. Amen. Uh, Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning. Even the world knows that. I'm using an example of uh, the experiment that not having too long happened. Uh, this experiment was being used by uh, what they call an imaging technician. Well. Uh, the scientists there discovered or uh, uncovered a host of bio biological mechanisms uh, that can turn thought, your thought, your belief or desire can be an agent for change for your cells and your body, for your tissues and for your organs, just by having hope. Hope itself. Now, now this is new to, to the world. This is not new to us. We all, we live on hope. Amen. Our hope is nothing less than Jesus Christ and his right righteousness. Uh, to put it simply, uh, what has the world now has discovered? That what you expect uh, in an event uh, can bring you the benefit of the event itself. Listen to what I'm saying. Here. Just what you expect. Well, if you expect uh, bad, then guess what happens? Bad comes. Well. If you expect uh, when you live in hope, then it, it comes. Man. It's just that simple. Faith fuels hope, but hope also fuels faith. Uh, Hebrews 1, 11 1 says that now hope is the assurance yeah. of things hoped for. Yes. That's the assurance that goes with yes. it. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's the conviction yes. of things not I seen. See. You're convinced uh, of it happening. Uh, so hope uh, in chapter, Hebrew chapter 11 makes it very clear that hope and faith are very closely tied together. Uh, one and lives the other. Uh, without hope, we cannot soar. Without faith, we cannot soar in hope. But without hope, Faith will limp home. Well. The greatest believers are the greatest hopers. And vice versa. Amen. Hope is infectious. Uh, it's, it will infect. Just as we can drag others down by our recrimina recrimination and mopping. Yeah. So we can inspire and motivate through our inspirational Amen. hoping. 
That's good. Amen. Our hope is contagious. Amen. Don't let that negative come around you. Amen. Don't let nobody involved. There are some people thinking that they got friends because uh, they get a crowd that comes around to them when they bring that bad news. Hmm. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you want to make sure uh, that those are your friends that hang around you when you bear bad, bad news, stop bringing bad news uh -huh. and see who comes around. Yeah. That's how you know who your friends are. Because most people are just nosy. They just want to hear you say, bring that bad news. And when you get through with it, they go on that separate yeah. separate. Yeah. Your sister so and so said, uh, son's, somebody's house burned down. Mm. And that's all they said, well, are you sure that's true? But I'm here to tell you uh, that hope is contagious. It encourages the sagging believer. It benefits, it lifts them up. Amen. Uh, it takes them out of depression. Yes. Uh, the unbeliever uh, cannot help bring bad, bad news. Hope is also healing, as I mentioned before. Amen. It will heal you from depression. It will heal, it will lift you up. It will even have has an influence on your pain. Hope does that. By definition, depression itself is a sense of hopelessness. Uh, many times I find myself in uh, therapy with others. The first thing I do with those that come with those depressed spirits is I give them hope. Man. I Man. tell them, hope oh, hang in there. Man. It's going to get better. Yes, yeah. uh, it, and, and they start feeling better all, all right away. That's what hope does. Man. Hope uh, itself is a heal. Mm -hmm. Now one researcher said this. Uh, he found that pessimism can underline even our physical health. Yes, sir. He found that a low level of pessimism had a robust association with reduced incidence of stroke. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Mayo Clinic, I'm sure many of you have heard of, website links high levels of negative and permissive uh, increases in mortality, increases in depression, increases stress and heart disease. That's what pessimism does. It will kill you. Many of us uh, would get closer to health and balanced realism uh, if we had less pessimism and greater optimism. Yes, sir. Uh, God has given us that. Yes, sir. Not just the world, but He's given it not to mankind, but to us yes, sir. as Christians. Amen. Hope is also practical. Now, it doesn't mean that your life is automatically going to turn to utopia right. and everything is going to be perfect. Not at all. At all. But hope is a motivator of action. That's what it does. Yes, sir. Uh, many times we can sit there all day talking about how bad it is and woe is me. But if we're not in, uh, given some kind of a motivation to move, nothing is going to happen. Well, Hope is what gives us the motivation to move. move. It gives us action. A researcher said uh, motivation, optimism, uh, it was found that the optimist uh, set more goals. There are many who don't want to do nothing. Mm. They are still struggling to get back to Egypt. Come on. Even though Egypt is no more longer there. Come on. Come on. Ah, yes, they are still yes, struggling sir. to get back to Egypt. Yeah. Uh, but a motivator, a person that optim that's an optimist, uh, they're going to not only uh, seek goals, more goals, but they're going to also seek even higher and more difficult goals. Yes. The pessimist uh, will put uh, more effort uh, into attaining uh, uh, going back to Egypt <laughs> than they are uh, taking on more gold. Yeah. Uh, the optimists stay engaged. They always are faced with difficult yes. attacks. And rise, and they rise above them. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the more they rise above them, the more they more the easy it get. Yes, sir. I'm here to tell you Talk, this morning. Sir. If you turn down uh, your effort to reach a goal, I'm here to tell you there's another one coming up that's gonna be great. Well, that's what God told the Israelites. He said, "Look, 
if you're climbing now about those about the enemy on feet on foot, guess what are you gonna do when they get on horses? Yeah. Right? What are you gonna do with your life if you won't face the obstacles Come on. and go Come today? On. What are you gonna do when it get on when it gets on horses? Yes. Sir. Yeah. That's, That's what God is doing. Yes, He's giving us trial to be ready for our next trial. Yes. Because ultimately, your, your, your last trial is to have enough faith so God will usher you on in and say, well, uh, you've done good. And, bring, and the angels then will help usher you on in in eternity. That's your ultimate one. Eventually, everyone with the sound of my voice is going to breathe his last breath. Yes, that's it. What state are you going to be in? Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be struggling and fighting for, for, for life? Are you just going to do that? Are you going to be in the, in, the, in, the, in the hands of God and be comfortable with that? Are you going to be in his rest? Are you, are you going to be begging God for one more day, one more minute? Or are you going to be ready? That's what everything, every uh, goal that we are faced with Brings us to that level Amen. where we one day will have to face God. Amen. That's right. Now, what's that got to do with me, you say, Brother Skate? Well, the Word of God tells us that God is not pleased unless you have faith. God is not accepting you. He's not pleased with you don't have faith. If you don't have faith that, that God is going to uh, keep you the will, your, His will, deliver you into eternity with Him, you're not going to be ready for heaven. Well, do you really think that you're going to be scratching and clowning uh, while leaving this side of life and all of a sudden God's going to welcome you in? Yeah. Come on. Get real with yeah. it. Uh, this is real. Yes, it's sir. just as real as life and death to you. Hope also purifies. Hope is a thing that will purify you. Uh, it will cause you to persevere. When you truly can persevere is when you've been purified. And you don't have that negative pulling you back and holding you back. 1 John 3, 3 tells us that it's that we're to be preserved in holiness. Everyone who has this hope in him, he says, purifies himself. Yes. Just as he is pure. Because yes. our effort, God's effort with us, is for <laughs> us to one day be like Christ. We're to be as he is. So it's a process of, of purifying us. Uh, it broadens us uh, in our thought process. Hope also brings about a positive emotion. A positive emotion brings all, also a broadened mind to yes, think, sir. Yes. think bigger. Yes, yes. Uh, Amen. What I learned in the early days as a young man, uh, uh, the, the wisdom around me, told me to keep it simple and see it be. Always keep it simple, yes. but always see it be. Yes. Uh, when you do that, the water's always too deep for you to walk. You're going to have to swim. So we learn how to swim. That's what we want to teach our, teach our children. Yes, the water may be too deep for you to walk on, but learn how to swim. Yes. You got to do that. Uh, we got to make sure we instill that in our children here, our young people here, because this is the future of the church. Yes, sir. Yeah. This yes, is sir. your future. Yes, it is. When you got to the point where you can't see, or you can't hear, <laughs> or you can't think anymore. Make it plain. Uh, and who's going to change? Who's going to change out your bad pains? Well, Man. who's going to do that? Well, you sir. can't do it yourself. Man. This, this is the future this here. Is it. This is what's going to make a decision on how your life is going to be until you end. So it's, it's not somebody else's child of what somebody else has done. This is for you and for me Amen. right Amen. now. So, so we got to realize Amen. that, yes, it's bad. And yes, we have uh, a situations with a lot of young people. But this is what we brought on ourselves. They didn't bring it on us because we didn't do our job. When we were supposed to do our job, Talk this sir. is what we're left to do. And God has blessed us with an opportunity 
to make it right with him. Amen. We didn't make it right when we were supposed Come to. Come on. Now he's making it, giving us an opportunity. So we've been blessed with what we call a human. We've been blessed to do that. Where is our grandchildren? Where is our children? Where is our, where is our brothers and our sisters? Amen. Where are they? They're not here. But you can't fix yesterday. That's right. But you can fix now. That's right. Amen. Because we have Amen. an opportunity to do Amen. that. And we can operate optimistic. Or we can opt to opt to make op operate in pessimism if we so choose to do that. So I'm here to tell you this morning, the anchors on faith many times are anchors that are unseen, but they're anchors. Sometimes you can't see the anchors because most of the time the anchors are, is in God, it's in Jesus Christ. But they're anchors and they'll hold you down and that they'll take us all the way into eternity. And we want those to come behind us. We want them to recognize and realize our anchors uh, that they can hold on to yes. that will take them all the way into eternity. Amen. That's good. Hope is real. Make sure uh, that this is not a, a, a message of positive thinking. Positive thinking is all right. But uh, there are some things in life, they're going to come, uh, the storms are coming, even in positive thinking. Amen. But we as Christians, we've been given, not that we're going to have a bed of roses, but we've been given the way through the storms. Amen. It's not that the storms are not going to come, but we've been given a way through the storm. And we want to give our younger people that advantage too over the world. Because the world is pessimist. Uh, we got all kinds of problems which brought about drug problems and all these problems we've got in our community yes, around us has to do with that spirit that's not of God. And, and so we can we can give them hope. Yes, sir. That's all they all are yes, looking sir. for. Even on drugs and alcohol, they are still looking for hope. That's right. They're just looking for it in the wrong places. That's, right. that's all that they're doing. All they want is the right place. Everybody wants the right and the truth. On everything, even though they might not know it, everybody wants to know the truth. Is they want to know what the deal is, as they say, uh, what what it is out there. So I'm here to tell you this morning that we need to circle ourselves together, unchanging hands, in fellowship one with another, and we need to put logs on the fires of hope. Amen. Because if you lose hope, you die. Man. If no hope, there's no hope. That's we it. all die. That's it. And you die uh, in pain. Uh, you die in a pessimist way. Don't worry about tomorrow. To, 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 you don't worry about this world. This world is not our home anyway. Amen. We are just passing through. That's it. But because we are just passing through, and this is not our world, we can anchor only on hope because we're just passing through. We have no world on this side of life. We are just passing through. So the only fly, only way we can fly is we got to fly on hope. Uh, we don't have false hope that the world has. It's their world and they're going to they gonna die and, and, and roll over like a roll and, and, and that's going to be the end of it. But we have hope to fly across this. Through this. And we want to give our, our future, the young people in this fellowship, that future too, by giving them hope. This morning, I've just given you a kind of pep talk this morning. Amen. Because many times the world can beat us down in sorrow mm -hmm. and we can uh, get so uh, hung up in that same old, same old. And we'll start listening to that bad news and woe is me. When God has already told us, uh, Christ has already let us know that he's going to return. That's right. We are so preoccupied with death mm. and how we're going to have it. We keep forgetting that Christ is going to return. That's right. Mm -hmm. You hear nobody exercise. You, you listen to all this, all these preaching, all this preaching. When have you heard somebody talk about Christ returning? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. now he's already told us he's returning. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said you would not know the day or the hour. That's right. And he said that I will come as a thief in the night. That's what he said. And no man will know. You got all kind of people making millions of dollars a day trying to tell you when he's coming. 
yeah. or when the world is coming in. You keep giving them that do those dollars so they can keep spending that money on those lift jets. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, the scripture said that you will not to know the day or the hour what it says. when he will come. Amen. But I can tell you this, you better be ready. All right now. He said that the dead and Christ will rise first. That's right. right. And then those that are not dead, I will then call them. I'll call them with the sign of a trumpet, the archangel, and I will call them in the air with me, and they will live with me forever. Yep. See, there's a difference in death being raised as I close here. There's a difference in being raised from the dead or resurrection. Well, resurrection is when that is that's the last time you're going to be raised. Amen. Christ is going to raise those that belong to him. And the scripture said they will meet him in the air. Okay. And you will live with him forever. forever. That's it with you if you're in that number. But if he comes there on a Sunday morning, like this morning, uh -huh. and all of a sudden you look around and the Lady sitting next to you is gone and you still sitting there. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> well, come on now. Come on. Come on. That's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> Look, all I can do is say, God have mercy. That's it. So you want when, when he comes, you want to leave with him in the air. The only way you're gonna be able to leave with him in the air if you're visiting today is you gotta be part of his church. That's it. You've got to be one of his, because he's already counting who's going to go with him. Yes, sir. Your name has got to be in the book of life. That's right. That's right. And that's where it's got to be. If your name is not there, you're going to be left here with the rest of those, and y'all going to go on finishing service. Mm. Mm. Uh, but it's not going to do you no good anyway. Well, Because the rest of us, because I'm going to be in it, yes, we're gone. All right. Yes. All right. Just yeah. all us gone. We are gone. Uh, but I'm yeah. here right now why, why the blood is running warm in your veins. Yes. yes. Why the day is day. Because when night comes, no man will work. I'm here right now to tell you you can get it right right now. Yes, sir. You can get it right now if you've been backsliding. You can get it right right, right now if you hadn't done what you're supposed to. You know uh, that, that the world don't taste that good. For you to hang out like yeah. that, All right, or hang out that long, you know it doesn't taste good. It's bitter. You know that. Yes. Good and, but you keep going yeah. to that same place, doing that same thing, and you're still not getting enough of it. Well, the scripture tells us it's like a it's barren, like a grave that never feed is filled. So you keep doing it. But I'm here to tell you right now that not only do you have a right to eternal life, you have the opportunity. Yeah. For eternal life. Yeah. And God has says, taste is good. Yes. Taste is good. It has a taste to it. And its, it's goodness has a good taste to it. Right now, you have an opportunity to do that. The first thing you need to do is, after I've spoken to you, have you heard of God's word? You got to believe what I said. Amen. What I said is what God said yeah. through his word. Yeah. You got to accept that I said that Jesus Christ is Son of God. You got to believe that. Amen. You can't just talk it. You got to walk. You can't do it for Amen. grandmother. Amen. You can't do it for dad. Amen. You got to do that for yourself because everyone is going to be, have to account for their thoughts and their deeds. Yes, sir. Everyone is going to have to account for that. Yes, so when you do that, God's not listening to what you say with your mouth. He's listening to what you say with your heart. Yes, sir. God is looking at your heart. You have an opportunity to do right, do that right now. The example of that is in Acts 2.38. Well, uh, Peter preached the first gospel message. And what he, when he got through preaching, like I'm finishing up now, hold up. He told them, after the sermon pricked their hearts, uh-huh, they asked him, what shall I do? That's right. Simple question. He says, repent. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Ask for forgiveness. Yes, sir. God is the only one that can forgive you. Solomon can't do it. Only God can do it. 
confess your sins yes. and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, right. Now, I know you say, well, I got all these sins, so wait until I get back next week. I got to get rid of I got to get her out or get him out. I got to do this and that and all these other things that we're taking. I'm going to tell you, he, he will tell you, God has made it easy for you. Yes. Christ died for your sins. That's right. Earth. That's right. Look, you're not going to hell for your sins. You're going to hell because you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. If you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and he accepts you, then he will give you the gift of his Holy Spirit. That's right. Yes, sir. And I don't care how bad or how tough you are, you and your homies. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that you you cannot out you can't out you can't whoop God. Your arms are not too long or no strong enough. Your eyes are not strong enough to beat God's power. Amen. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and then He gives you the gift of His Spirit, then God is in you. Look, you ain't so tough that you can beat God up. When the Spirit of God is in you, He will overpower. Oh, your little strength. Yeah. And you will and, and his blood will continue to wash your sins away. And you will continue to be strengthened till you become like Jesus Christ. That's it's it. about you becoming like Jesus Christ. On that day when Jesus looks at you, he wants to see himself. That's, it. That's, That's, it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. When he looks at you, he's going to look in a mirror and he's going to see himself. Yes. That's what it's all about then. He wants to see himself. You can do that right now. It won't cost you a dime. You don't have to write a check. You don't have to drink any blood. All right. You don't have to kiss any snakes. You don't have to do anything uh, ritualistic in this fellowship well, to accept Christ. Amen. I beg you to do that right now as we stand together and sing a song of invitation. I am resolved.